Today I have the distinct pleasure of speaking with George Putnam from Scandium International. How are you today? Good afternoon, Tracy. I'm fine. George, as you know, Investor Intel is always following issues of sustainability, so we love Scandium International, and I'd love for you just to comment on the China-U.S. Uh, trade uh, debate, let's call it that right now, and how it might affect Scandium. Well, in a way, it's not going to affect Scandium at all, because our project is in Australia, it's an OECD country, and um, we're, uh, we're quite apart from that. Um, that those trade discussions, except to say that uh, we'd probably benefit from it significantly if there is more um, serious issue in embargoing uh, materials between China and the U.S. Because we're uh, we're apart from it, we are a uh, we're a reliable source from a reliable location. Well. Thank you. That's exactly what I was assuming might be the case with what's happening. Everyone's looking right now, George, as you know, at rare earths. They're looking at uranium, but they need to get scandium on their dashboard. And with you being one of the world's first primary, scan primary scandium mines to be built, can you give us an update on what's happening with Scandium International, including an update on what's happening with your 2017 mine lease? Right. Uh, well, interesting you'd ask that question. I was in Australia just last week talking with the uh, New South Wales Department about getting a resolution on this point, and uh, I think we are well on a, the right path to getting a mine lease reissued over this property and over the ground that we own specifically, and I see that, uh, I see that mine lease uh, coming into our hands relatively quickly now, uh, perhaps uh, later, as early as later this month. So that issue is going to quickly be solved and settled, which turns us, of course, back to the, um, the critical issue of finding customers. And uh, that's really, well, that's, the, that's the task at hand, and that's what we're looking forward to getting back to and focusing on. Okay, so let me back you up. Just as an interested shareholder at Scandium International, the news that we're waiting for on the, on the clarification on the mining lease is anticipated in the next month. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I can't say for sure because there are government signatures involved, but it's looking it's looking good for a resolution that allow it would allow us to go forward and build this project pretty much exactly the same as it sits in our feasibility study. And I know that you have made reference to customers. You just did in this interview. Uh, what's happening? How will this impact your offtake agreements? And what's going on in that particular front with customers? Of course. Well, honestly, the the uh, the mine lease issue has been it hasn't been a sideline issue, but it hasn't affected our discussions with customers. It hasn't slowed us down there. We have two key uh, letters of uh, um, LOIs with uh, with customers, and they are deep in a technical. Uh, evaluation of scandium in their products. We're looking to turn the corner with both of these uh, potential customers, I believe, in the next one to two quarters. And with that, there'll be a clear value proposition for scandium for each of them. So for everybody out there who's watching uh, what's happening between, of course, the U.S. and China, and we're looking for sustainable, critical material resource sources, We'll all be watching you, Scandium International. And can you tell us what we as, as shareholders should anticipate, say, in this next quarter or two, in addition, obviously, to the items you've mentioned? Uh, sure. Um, well, as a as as a re, as a recap, I would say uh, we uh, we want to solve our mine lease issue definitively, and we want to solve it quickly. And so shareholders should expect that that comes and that comes soon. Um, we're looking to have, as I mentioned, a full technical ses success with a couple of our LOI partners. We're looking to add more potential customer partners in the form of LOIs in uh, the remainder of this year. We did, we did eight of those last year. We did one more this year. Uh, it means I have seven to go this year to, uh, to, uh, to, to match what we did last year. There will probably be more in the casting space. Um, because those those folks are very much self sufficient, and uh, and we and we like that in particular. You haven't seen quite so much of that as we think there is uh, potential in the second half of this year. 
Well, speaking of potential, as one of the world's top scandium experts, what should we expect with, say, the scandium price and uh, demand? Do you any updates that you can provide uh, some of us investors with? Uh, the the pricing is um, uh, actually in a little bit of a downtrend, which I think is not a bad thing. Uh, it reflects the fact that the Chinese are making more scandium now than they did in the past, which I also think is a good thing. The market is not short of scandium now for testing, and we like that. Um, that's a that's a real that's a real positive. Depending upon what happens in trade talks between the United States and China, there could be some disruption of Chinese sources of scandium. And I think that's going to be a good thing for Scandium International. It's going to highlight the fact that we are the, 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 the earliest possible producer outside of, uh, of China in, in the Australian clay belt. We're of a good size and uh, commercial size and scale to offer scandium to uh, waiting global markets outside of the disruptions that are going to be caused by, uh, apparently going to be caused by this trade dispute with the U.S. Well, as always, George, thank you so much for the update. It's a real pleasure to get an update from Scandium International. Uh, my pleasure, Tracy. Thank you.